So the idea of being able to supercharge your economic growth by adding financial services or financial services capabilities to this, I think is quite compelling and has contributed to the growth that we see in the world today. Why not replicate that in the digital world? Hello, my name is Chi Kin. I'm responsible for legal and compliance in DBS. That's my day job. Actually, I'm also a gamer. It's one of the great things about the digital world, the metaverse, or the next version of the internet, is everything I grew up on is becoming real. And I really want to see that come to pass, perhaps in my generation. My guest today is Lam Chi Kin. He is Group Head of Legal and Compliance at DBS Bank. Chi Kin recently put out an important perspective, arguing the case for putting humanity front and center of the metaverse business model. So it may not just be about the internet, which actually is a way of transmitting information. It may be about the way we engage ourselves in the digital world. And today, it's more about your monitor, how nice it is, your graphics, the sound, your headphones. But tomorrow, um, you can see a reality where you are immersed in alternate reality technology. Uh, you have digital assets which you can store, which you can transfer, which you may be able to pass through generations. So to me, the next version of the internet or the metaverse or Web3 is built around these technologies as they mature and giving humans much more engaged experience. I think we've got to look at the next version of the internet as combinations of multiple metaverses, call them that, or economies that are all interacting with each other. And anybody that provides value to different economies in the physical world uh, can succeed. So a lot of this could be because there is a risk also of all these economies. Uh, I'm equating economies to the idea of uh, metaverses or digital worlds. There is a risk that these digital worlds then form very closed walls. If you think about economies that are actually interacting with the rest of the world, there's trade, there's foreign exchange, and that contributes to economic growth. However, if you're a closed economy, you're actually only trading within the supply and demand characteristics of that economy. So the idea of being able to supercharge your economic growth by adding financial services or financial services capabilities to this, I think is quite compelling and has contributed to the growth that we see in the world today. Why not replicate that in the digital world? If you look at these digital worlds as economies that are interacting with each other, there are also opportunities to value add into these economies. And one of the ways of doing this is what we call the inside out business model. You can take your existing business and ask how we are providing value to these digital economies. So legal services in the digital world or uh, intermediation of flows between digital worlds. I think all those are potential opportunities that we cannot exclude. Another way you can think about it, this is a word we use uh, called picks and shovels, uh, the underlying infrastructure for the digital economy. Uh, and this could be uh, the hardware, uh, the computing power, or also things like legal services or marketing services in the digital world. I think all these are feasible business ideas as we see the digital world maturing. All financial services, we can think about how we intermediate flows of assets, of money, of economic uh, um, uh, ideas uh, between these digital worlds. Uh, every time you see um, an exchange of one currency with another currency, you see a need for the ability to price the difference between that currency and another currency. Um, when you have an asset, instead of just sitting on the asset, you try to borrow money against the asset. But if you borrow money, you have to take security on that underlying asset. Now, these are the things that actually the bankers or the world of finance, we're actually quite good at that. And so that is one of the things that is potentially an opportunity when we think about the metaverse or the next version of the internet. It's not just about the opportunity. It's also about the risk and it's also about what humanity needs and wants. So as we try to shoot for the economic growth which we need, we've got to think about the downsides at the same time and not make the same mistakes we've made in the past. 
And then we've also got to think about what humanity needs. So yes to business, but yes to risk management, but also yes to what humanity needs. So what I liked, even loved about the question that Deloitte Center for the Edge asked about being human in the digital world is because quite often we think about business opportunities, we think about risks, but we don't actually ask the overarching question. What if, does this mean for humanity? And what does it mean to be, in a sense, still a vibrant, thriving human being in a potential future? And I think your question provoked me and hopefully many, many other people uh, to think about what sits ahead of us in a very different way. Thank you. Businesses, governments and individuals are all key participants in this important debate about our collective future. While algorithms make decision-making much more convenient, technology should help us choose without choosing for us so that we retain our sense of autonomy.